Welcome back to the panel here at Starletter I-League Star Series Finals. And we have ourselves a whole way through third game next. But first, I mean, let's talk about this game. This game was kind of crazy. It kind of felt like a repeat of previous game, but then swapped around. We had Alliance doing not so good in the early game, doing well in the late game. Uh, contrary, of course, what we saw in game number one here. Scan, your first initial thoughts after this game. Yeah, it's a repeat also just because the rush fights kind of end up deciding mm -hmm. the game. Um, I, I I think that uh, what's interesting, Winston and I were discussing, we we, we thought that the 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 Broodmother, <laughs> we thought that the Broodmother was going to just like dominate Alliance, and actually the Broodmother didn't really do that much. Mm -hmm. But then Secret were owning anyway, even though the Broodmother is not doing that much. And then we have these rush fights, which yes. just like the first game, <laughs> these rush fights, I, 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 I'd love to see in the third game how, how brave any team is to take rush. Winter, I hope that we have a rush <laughs> fight so that you can talk us through the highlight of the rush fight, if there is one, which we don't know for sure. We do not, unfortunately. Okay, no not highlights. this time. Oh, we have. <laughs> we have. Okay, yeah, but they, they are still uh, there. We, we will get them once we get them. There is it. There it is. The Score Esports highlight, and uh, this is 19 minutes in. Winter, take it away. What? <laughs> okay, basically the shots. They, they blocked. The, that was the first move. They blocked off the path. Oh, and then even though S4 blinked behind, he, yeah. he got a really good sonic wave. But Gyrocopter already did a, mass, a, a majority the, the, of the damage right there in front. Oh, and here we go. This is the first rush fight. This was the first... Yeah. Is this, yeah, this, this, is one? this yeah, is 27 yeah, yeah. minutes into the game. I think this is where the bat brings the Venge onto the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the first one, yeah. yeah. He, br he brings in on the cliff, and then I was like, oh my god, if they don't kill him, someone is going to be on the cliff. And then yeah. Jackie Mao gets stuck, and... Then the snowball. He brought him down. But he was there for, like, the whole fight, so it still decides the fight, even though Puppy brings him down. I mean, towards the end of the game, it was the gyrocopter that was basically the one main core against three people that were almost just as farmed as him. So if you are able to put that highest net worth on the cliff and basically make sure that that gold is gone in the side of secret, you know, you're going to be uh, you're going to be kind of sad as they don't really have anybody else to do out to dish out the damage they had. Obviously, the brood who tried Batrider was more of a control rather than damage, obviously. And it worked out at the start, but at some point the rest just started to take over for Alliance, the three core in a way beat the the one core. And of course, a lot of this also this possible later on in the game. Fight. Actually, at the start of the game, and I just saw it on Twitter as well as Fog, who was a bit surprised about this perhaps, a team, uh, Alliance, in the start of the game, had a Chen game that took zero towers in the early game, which is very unusual. Kepa, yeah. what went wrong? Yeah, we were talking about um, Chen, especially Puppy's Chen, but one thing that we didn't talk a whole, a whole lot about was Ake's Chen. Uh, this is actually Ake's 200th career game on Chen. He's got Ooh. even more games than Puppy does. Um, but Ake plays a different style of Chin. It's not nearly as greedy. He's not really as big on farming as some of the Chins that you normally see. I mean, 38 minutes into the game, he only had a Soul Booster, whereas most Chins we've seen this patch are already well on their way to their Aghanim Scepter if they don't have it already. But I think that's what we needed. Uh, when we saw the Chin pick, some of us were worried about how much farm he was going to take relative to the Terra Blade being in the game, you know, everything else that Alliance had going with him for the course. But I think the way that Ake plays Chin really complemented their playstyle. And even though he didn't take a lot of towers early, he still kind of provided the support his team needed. His job this game is not to take towers. Exactly. I, I, I'm not saying that Chen shouldn't take towers, but his job this game was to just to secure the lane for the Terra Bit, which we didn't get to see on camera how he actually killed uh, the Brute Mother. But I think that was the whole reason why Alliance was able to farm up the Terra Bit, because we expected, oh, Brute Mother is going to run over this lane. But in the end, it actually did not happen, because Chen was able to kill the Brute twice in the laning phase. But I don't think we caught even once of of it on the camera, so I'm not sure what happened. Maybe he just got really good creeps and he smoked and he came from behind. But that's actually the key, to be honest. I mean, we talk about the rush fights, but if, if Chen isn't able to kill Brood, I feel like Brood just gets un out of control in that game and Alliance, they get punished for the greed. They never get to that point. Yeah, we have we have playing Batrider this game, of course, for Team Secret as well, uh, which is, uh, this was the first time, uh, sorry, the first time that he played it for Team Secret, and he played it once before, uh, from what I've been told, in his professional career, in which he lost, unfortunately. Uh, that's not true losses, 0% loss rate. But, well, <laughs> that's, uh, that's not great. 0% win rate, rather. 100% loss rate. There you go. <laughs> I can do stats as well. I like I like the way that Puppy is, even if even if Weeha didn't win on the Batrider, I like that Puppy is at least having faith in Weeha. Uh, like, he did good, too, right? Exactly. Like we, we, I mean, he made some questionable decisions in the mid-game, but, I mean, he still played pretty well overall. I mean, maybe the Vinch pull-up wasn't the best decision, but they still, if they get the kill, and I think they thought they were going to get the kill, that the swap doesn't happen um, up onto the cliff with the gyrocopter. But 
I think that if you're going to play and if you're going to win a tournament like this, you can't babysit any of your players. You can't think that they're not able to play some of these heroes that you need to be able to play in this version. And I like that Puppy, even though maybe Weeha is having some growing pains on this patch, he's still willing to say, I believe you can play this hero. I believe we can win with it. I'm going to give it to you. And, and actually, the bat pick kind of won that. Well, we, I think we thought the bat pick kind of won in the draft because it made Alliance think that the bat's going to be in the off lane, and then suddenly this brood comes out at the end right. of the draft. So I think with, without that bat pick, uh, maybe Alliance would have been ahead even from the beginning. Yeah, there's also another thing that maybe we can talk about a bit. It was uh, the item selection of uh, Jackie Mao that game because he went for SNY into Butterfly. Yeah. So there were there were a few fights that he actually they actually lost because he was actually controlled because he didn't have BKB. He was able to output a lot of damage, but once he gets controlled, he's just dead. So th those were the fights that they actually lost. So uh, game number three, guys. Single elimination. No second chances after this game. What needs to happen? What needs to change? Because both teams have done the same thing basically. Lose the early game, win the game. Who is? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> so basically, you have to focus on losing the early Nobody game. Feel, you it feels like the TI three. It feels like TI three finals. Yeah. Very similar in a lot of ways, actually. But if this goes like TI three finals, then the game three is going to be like a draft win, eighteen minute game. I think which no we I'm not uh, hoping for. No. <laughs> I, th I think nobody should try sneak rush. <laughs> nobody should try to sneak rush. If okay. you try sneak rush, they're gonna they're gonna call you on it. They're gonna kill you and turn the game around. So yeah. Stay away from Rush for a while. <laughs> yeah, both teams <laughs> seem to be very in the same mindset of when the other team would do Roshan. And, and, and we talked about this before the series started as well. Poppy and S4 know each other through and through. They've, they've been on the team together. They've faced each other multiple times in, uh, in matches. I mean, you know, TA3 finals, anyone. Right. Uh, so, so they know when the other one would try to do Roshan. Exactly. So, so sneaky Roshan. And Roche Envy even really played for Alliance for a long time back in Old, as well. old No Tide Hunter. So Although these are. Very intimately familiar teams. To, to be fair, w the cases are slightly different because mm -hmm. in the first game, Alliance ahead, they try sneak rush, they don't need to. In the second game, sure, secret are ahead, but I don't know if they lost the fight just because they went for rush. Like mm. maybe they win the fight. No, they went for stuck. rush after losing an engagement. I remember they lost one engagement before that. I like, was like maybe two heroes. I think NB went died, and then after that they realized, oh, maybe we should try something else. We should try to get the Aegis, and then they went for the Roshan fight, and then they lost the Roshan fight as well. Yeah, but uh, but I'm saying they might win the fight if that bat uh, Jara thing doesn't happen. So. Yeah, maybe. You know, like it's it's possible the decision to rush was okay as long as the fight didn't go so horribly. How do you feel the Oracle yeah. pick ended out ended up for? Really good. I think he did a lot of work. Yeah, I think it worked really well with the gyrocopter. Just being able to put uh, the disarm on a gyro for the hundred percent magic resistance. Like he's that one of the few. Well, he's one of the few carries. Yeah. Can still did you do you see how early Bulldog was forced to the jungle? He like he just like literally, oh, I can't even lane here at all. Right. I, I'm just going jungle because yeah. he got forced out of the lane by the gyro and the Oracle. Yeah. So it was also the fact that the Oracle was able to exert such a dominance against the offlaner. Yeah, I think it was a good pick as well. Yeah, but and if you want to know how uh, that Oracle was played exactly by Pilot Dive, if you want to know his item build, if you want to know his skill build, go check out the Score Esports app, which you can get on the iOS App Store or Google Play. And we are in the draft of game number three. And Secret finally it's get it! Secret Chen! It's the first time they've the even had the possibility of getting the Chen, and they pick it up immediately. It's been so often against them. <laughs> Excuse me. Banned six times. Deny picked once. Can you see a lion's band bounty answer? That's yeah. yeah, it's just I mean they That's what allows the chin pick to happen. Yeah. Yep. And that means maybe Alliance has a I mean they know that a Secret is gonna pick up the Chen at first pick, right? Yeah. So they have a plan? No, I mean, I think they, they definitely know. They want to ban Bouncy because it f that's like the most important hero in beating them in the first game. And they know that if they ban Bouncy, they're probably giving Chen. So I don't think it should be any kind of surprise to them. And they, they get themselves the bat with that as well, which is, uh, oh god, we've seen, we actually have seen this one. They picked this exact one, exact draft for uh, against Fnatic that they had in the group stages. That was the fastest game that Alliance had. They won within 22 minutes because S4 Bat Rider is a beast, <laughs> and then creates so much space for Bulldog that he can also be a beast. And then basically they they had a they had a, a, a Chen for Loda in that game as well. Or not a Chen, uh, Sven, rather. <laughs> they, they, they just ran over their opponent, and I'm kind of scared for a Secret right now. But yeah, so but they have the Chen, though, so Chen can actually control the early game. Like, the games that I remember you mentioned, Bear Rider having a lot of farm to make a lot of space, so if the Chen can actually control the early game, maybe gank the Bear Rider and pressure his lane, and slow down the tempo, because, like you mentioned, if they go for Sven and Lone Druid, they have two heroes that will rely on the bat to make a lot of space if they go down that route. So the bat rider should be the focal point where the enemy team would try to shut him down in as the first target because he's going to be the one making space for the team. And another relatively early Oracle pickup. 
Yeah. yeah. This time, most likely against the bat. Uh, yeah, it's very good against the bat, definitely. I, I was saying in the previous draft that maybe it was picked with the bat just to like protect it. And yeah. I, ab about the bat also, I, I just want to say one thing, which is that uh, the Fnatic game, do either of you guys remember? I didn't. S is that the game where S4 solo killed mid one? Yes. Like yes, yes, yes. In yeah. minute two. Do you think that could happen against Weeha? Do you think that's likely? To I mean, it probably depends on the hero, but... Very dependent on is hero. Is Weeha the kind of player who's going to die solo to a bat very oh, early? I, I don't know. Because that was a big part of that game. That was like, you know, all the momentum for S4. I, I saw Wings do the same thing, actually. When a bat rider in the mid lane makes a kill that early in the game, that's when you get out of control. And whether you get stacks, that's always another thing. Like I, th I think that even if you don't get a kill early, the more important thing that when I'm playing bat rider, I always focus on yelling at the supports. I mean, not yell, <laughs> but I, I tell them to stack for me. Okay, you get what I mean. Yes, I, yes I'm yes, telling yes. them to stack for me. You communicate. Yeah, uh -huh. I communicate. Or yell, which is so the same thing, just a little bit harsher. <laughs> it's fine. I, I've been in a pub with you. You are very vocal in a good way, but you are also very vocal when something doesn't go the way that you want it to go. Are you a flamer? Your support. <laughs> Is Winter a flamer? Uh, he gets he gets very agitated as in you know he just he just wants the team to do well. He is and very if you're below the, if you're the weak link, then he the will let you know that you are the weak link. GG. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, uh, we, we actually won. Help. It was fine. <laughs> a lot of uh, a lot of caps in the. Captain in, in winter. He can captain a team Dude, very well. You, you know that I was sitting next to Owen at the house and you know he was like trolling the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, you get mad easily when he's like trolling you the whole game. Because you, you want to take it You get mad easily. Yeah, I get mad. Like, <laughs> like whatever, dude. Like, he's like running, telling us to go in. I'm like, how are we going to go in? You're going <laughs> to die. Like, whatever. He's like, just, just go in, just go in. And I'm going in with him and he kills me every time. Do you want to psychoanalyze their expressions? <laughs> Do they look happy? Do they they look focused, and you mm. can't judge someone on their re resting face. Some people have just a focused, angry face, focused, sad face, focused. Happy Puppy's face. always got the leg bounce going. Who has a focused, happy face? Uh, no. Yeah, no, no do one. people not? If you're focused, you, you can't be smiling. Sometimes so. you can smirk. No, some but, but you know smirk. how some people have like a resting, uh, resting bitch face? How do people <laughs> have a resting, happy face? It's a smirk. Is it a sm Yeah, but. but it's not resting. No, it's it's not resting. A smirk yeah. seems like you would do it on purpose. Yeah. Like you do. <laughs> I was actually I was gonna say Slacks has a resting happy face, but it's not really. He just smiles a lot. I yeah, think he exactly. just smiles yes. a lot. That's exactly. Yes. I would like to have a hap resting happy. Face. That would actually would seem like you're a maniac. <laughs> <laughs> Secret actually. Sorry, banned back the to the draft. Yeah. Secret banned the well, they banned the Sven. We talked about how we know that Alliance will want it, but they also banned the Gyro, which is the hero that EE has been playing like a lot recently. Will so they go terribly for themselves? Because the Gyro could be good versus killing the illusions of terribly. And they've and they've got the oracle which and the is chen. Yeah, we'll yeah, make sure that you will get a thunder off every time. And I, this is what we've been wa waiting for for the whole tournament. Eternal Envy used to be like the ultimate Terrorblade picker, and he was really sad. Yeah, when the hero he got meant nerfed. black. But we just those are the two biggest yeah. players. We talked about the Terrorblade every single draft that we've seen Secret Duo, <laughs> apart from the previous game where we actually saw the Terrorblade. Yeah. And since we talked about it right now, we won't see it this game. Sorry. Yeah. You're saying we jinxed it. We, we jinxed it. But maybe with that it. saying that, I anti jinxed it, so Absolutely. we'll see it again. But maybe by saying that. Yeah. So you actually want to see the Tyrell pick? I wouldn't mind seeing it. I think I, it's fun I think I would really yeah, like. He, seeing he used to be it. kind of a relatively boring hero to see because it's. I mean, sometimes a lot of illusion based split push heroes can be boring, but he is just like in your face push early. Type he of a he kills your stuff so fast. There's nothing to see when he's winning the game. But it's still fun because it, it it forces fights to happen. Like you have to defend. And he's new. All right, sure. I wonder. I just want to see. I want to see. Want, just, I mean, yeah, okay. So fan, well, fan our fan boy. Okay. So <laughs> two years from now, we're probably gonna all, you know, grown resident sleeper when Arc Warden gets picked. But the first <laughs> time Arc Warden gets picked in a game, we're gonna be excited. Yeah, I guess. New stuff is exciting. Exactly. The, yeah. the reason I want to see Jackie Mao play Terrorblade is b we were discussing during the previous game like item builds for Terrorblade, mm -hmm. and you want to see Eternal Envy play a carry to know what the build is because he's the mm -hmm. guy who's figured out exactly the best build. And we'll see he if he goes the Dragon Lance. Yeah, does he copy the, the the builds that the Chinese teams have been going? Because some of them go Dragon Lance, some of them don't. Uh, I think we were saying Sila doesn't usually. Um, well, they did. He's once. very old school though, Sila. He doesn't do anything like too weird or. Well, like the new invention. Yeah, new invention. Right. So, if you go according to the first game, they will pick Venge, but this time they're going to go for the Witch Doctor because of the Chan Creeps. This hero yeah, does good. better against the Chan Creeps. Because they were thinking a long time for that pick. And there, and it, there is. it is. Oh, yes. I anti-jinxed it with my anti-jinx things. Well yes. done. I'm very happy. It worked. 
Any predictions from anyone? Related. What what his item build will be? Um, I don't think he goes Dragonlance. <laughs> I don't I, know. I don't play the hero. <laughs> I think he just goes like Aquilamanta, Scotty. I mean the normal build. Yeah, the normal build is like all those items, the stat items, mm. and Manta is always good versus Bear Rider. So he can't. It's very hard for the Bear Rider to lasso you if you're quick on the fingers. Right. And you can remove the root from the bear, so mm. it's very useful. So for Alliance, um, what are they going to go for for Loda this game to go with the Lone Druid? Yeah, they 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 might feel pressured to pick Loda's hero now because it looks like Secret are starting to only ban Loda heroes at the end of the draft. Um, I think they'd prefer to pick a support and save Loda's hero, but... So, quick quick mechanics question. Um, when Terrorblade Sunders, it's not considered, if he's at low HP and he Sunders a high HP target, that's not considered healing for the purposes of Oracle ult. It's just HP swap, correct? Like, it wouldn't actually con be considered healing. Yes. I don't so know. he would gain HP while the ulti. Right. Is that what you're asking? Yes. I think he just raw just would switch, no matter what. I, I also think, think so. I think so. Because yeah. it's not considered heal. Because you can still right. swap HP when Ice Blast. Exactly. So I, I, I'm not sure. I think it should work that way. I would agree with that too. So why do they pick Silence? Is that to counter the fact? The Oracle got, like, and the Sunder, yeah, exactly. mostly. And then Bad Rider, you know, when I'm playing Bad Rider, Silence is my best friend. I just let, I just like whatever, less or And then Global, it's... It's it's one of EGM's comfort heroes as well. It's a very good pick here. It counters the Chen, it counters the Oracle, it counters Terrorblade. You have to go Lotus up, you have to go Greaves, you know. Okay. Then you have to get a Manta BKB on Terrorblade. I do think that, I mean, one weakness of a support Silence is that you sometimes get into a position where, like, if you're behind, then it, all it does is ulti. It does nothing else in the game. Um, yeah, but that's like what he needs to do, you know. Like he's like AA, very similar to AA. Like he provides a lot in the laning phase. He zones the off lane. He's very hard to deal with as an off laner. And then after that, you don't really gank. You're just sitting down trying to farm. And whenever a team fight happens, you pop your ultimate. That's basically what the hero does most of the time. Suggestion for a hero, which is not your typical loader hero, at least not in this patch. But it seems like time dilation is actually really good against Team Secret right now. Yeah, but they can't really... F oh, ma yes, if they can. They can pick Loda but, but as I, Void. But I don't really like Void safe lane. Just me, me neither. <laughs> but they, can, they can put Lone Druid safe lane. They do but it, is kinda, well. it is kind of a Lotus style. That's true. It's possible for Bulldog to go safe lane and Loda to be off lane yeah. Void. They it's have possible. Around, so maybe. Uh, I think if they knew when Misery's hero were going to be, they'd be more comfortable in doing that. I want... What yeah, I, well, what do you guys think of the, the Zeus versus Bat in the mid lane? Because I saw, so the other game... <laughs> both both heroes start stick. Well, <laughs> that's, I, we, we were talking about how S4's Bat Rider really early on solo killed against mid ones in Voker. Right. When Wings were playing Bat Rider, they also got a, a solo kill very early on mid against, I think it was Vega Squadron, no one on the Zeus. And it was like level two or something, he just got too many stacks on Zeus. And, but I wasn't sure, like, is that how the lane's meant to go? Oh, this is a good ban by Secret. Sorry, go ahead. I, I'm just wondering, like, maybe Wins has, not, like, a battle Zeus meant to win that lane, or is it just meant to be... Uh, I mean, it should be better for Bat Rider, because you are always... The hero that has the kill potential should always pose a threat of pressure to the enemy. So, yeah, but Zeus should still be able to farm. And if you play relatively slave, you should be able to farm and not die. But, you know, like, sometimes players get greedy and whatnot, you know, shit happens. I think, I feel like the turn rates actually really annoy Zeus, like, you, once you got those napalms on you. Yeah, that's why you have to be careful, like, try not to be too greedy. So for the last pick for Alliance, they're going to look for a loader hero um, that can facilitate the push. In the first game, we saw Slada. Um, this game, we have Bat Rider to initiate, so maybe he'll be on something that helps the push more. Ooh. Well, this is really, really unexpected because it's like very greedy now, Lone Druid and Spectre. It's super greedy, and, and I think it really does matter now that they have a support silencer because if your cores are greedy and you have a support that only does... A yeah, but then the, the thing is, like, when you pick silencer, you want a core that can actually fight, so you can actually... Or jungle, then you can take the lane. That's why... That's when the silencer is really happy because you have a lane and you can keep farming. But the Spectre here is, like... Remember what Parker said during the end of the game? He, he feels like after the, the first two games, he feels like the team would focus a lot on picking more late game, so you actually secure the game in that sense that if the game goes long, you have a lot of late game. What do we look out for here, guys? What do we look out for? The timber saw pick is quite weird, though. Yeah. Like they need to help. Like the Chen needs to help the timber saw. Otherwise, the timber saw will have a really hard time because it's against silencer. I th I think that uh, secret have a maybe slightly better draft here. Yeah. In my opinion, and also I just I voted Terrorblade last round. I'm voting Terrorblade again. This time it's even Eternal Envy. So I'm gonna say secret actually. Yeah, I feel like um, Alliance got kind of backed into a hole. They had to pick a carry that they maybe weren't super comfortable with in their lineup in the Spectre, and I think that that really gives Secret the edge here. Okay, 
Let's see if uh, the late game is going to go Alliance's way or if perhaps Secret can do it. It is a it is a do it or die match, guys. Secret or Alliance, which team will move on to the top four? Let's find out with LD and Gods. That's right, Cheever. This is our deciding game three. Welcome into Minx Arena. It's an absolutely packed house. Biggest match yet today. Gods, Alliance taking on Secret. We've gone the distance. Very topsy-turvy series. Both teams jumped out to an early lead, and the team that had the better start lost the game both times. Are we going to see it again? I think we're going to see Alliance off to a bad start, though. That's for sure when you see the Spectre pick. But I like to believe that Greed can be punished, though. And Alli Alliance may have the draft that can, can be punished this time. You've got Chen Oracle. You've got decent aggression, decent ability to pressure towers with the Terra Blade. Timbersaw, who can just bully a Spectre in general. I feel like Timbersaw was actually a great last pick if they can get the farm and levels on the hero because Spectre really does not like versing Timbersaw. So I like to believe that Greed can be punished. And I'm going to hope that Secret have what it takes, but this is so far being a game and a series where Greed has paid off. Are we going to see it again? Whoa, last this, game. This well, me? all right. Yeah, there's uh, Dota that, happening like, here, okay, guys. That smoke on by is next level. Smoke down mid, up the enemy ramp Without into the copy. Radiant Jungle. Hey, Pylite, how's it going, buddy? Oh, he's, Daggers he's there. The tower, They're going to dive this one a little bit. Do they want to commit into the tower? No, Alliance. Ooh. Their turn to try for a super aggro smoke. Hoping for that first blood and the quick start, but this time we'll be denied. That's like some alliance, like next level theory craft. Like you go back, this is a team who's come up with like some next level, level one strats, be it the TP level one Roche, stuff like the Fury on bait in the Roche pit. I feel like that's one of those things they've theory crafted. Like, okay, everyone just smokes down the bottom lane into the Radiant Jungle. What else can we do from the dire side that's going to catch someone by surprise? Eh, straight down mid. Let's do it. We sneak by. This smoke doesn't pop. Unfortunately, it doesn't work there, though. Yeah, definitely a good effort, though, here. And we get underway. Bounty runes were grabbed, and the heroes enter the lane. So we did see a hill ward drop down up over towards that top rune, trying to protect the mid lane Zeus. Fairly vulnerable, albeit Alliance, not the best roaming support duo. Meanwhile, Bulldog having the full complement of bears this time, as he didn't have to give one up early. A little bit of pull a bit safer. Doesn't have to commit the hero for this. And he'll grab the entire creep wave off, so... Pretty nice stuff for him, but loses his creep wave to a neutral camp, which is... Uh-oh. Whoa, Bulldog. Oh, He's hey, buddy. Misposition. He gets snared. He himself. could be in trouble here off the bat. Ooh, uh, not going to go up, down just up. yet, but that auto attack damage really punishing him. And, oh, we'll get the salve off. Yeah, he, he fumbled that one a bit, but he really didn't want his neutral camp, oh, the neutral camp taking his creep wave, but... Yeah, ni for him. and nicely done by Secret to deny that. This... Used to be a very common tactic back around the TI3 era with the constant pulling from Prophets and Lone Druids. Uh, now you have some other options with the new map, especially in this patch. As EGM, ooh, almost got clapped there. Might have been a first blood if yeah, that happened. He, wait, he, got, he went for an auto attack before the clap, but had the fairy fire, had the tango heal going, so it's always going to be hard to get that early kill. So I think importantly for the offlane for Bulldog is that the Metamorph is on cooldown for a bit. That extremely long cooldown does allow him to play a bit more aggressive. Yeah, if they, the if they get the first blood, they're totally worth it. Oh, mid lane, we're going to have a big skirmish as for committing for this. But he's so low that one more nuke will bring him down. He underestimates the little lightning man's damage output. Gives up the first blood. If Normally if not a lane where Batrider dies at yeah, this stage. Yeah, if you told me one thing about this game, like... I would not have never have believed that S4 gets solo killed mid by a Zeus. Uh, like, especially when it's an S4 bat. That is the one thing I would have refused to believe could happen this game. And it, well, it just happened. So what a series this has been. Like, the comebacks we've had in game one and game two, and now, like, a completely unexpected start to game number three. I'll tell you one thing. Magic Stick is going to be damn good in this mid lane. Yeah. That's for sure. Both players already picked it up. But with the kill there, Weeha will be much more comfortable. Also leading in terms of CS, albeit it is early and it's fairly close. So the good news for Alliance is that they are farming pretty well on Bulldog in the offlane. So too is the Spectre. Not really being shut down early. And oh, Bulldog has been caught out. But they're terribly not quite in range to really threaten for a kill. Holding on to a skill point didn't go. If he can get, if he's 100% sure of a kill, he'll get the point in reflection. Otherwise, I doubt it. S4, he's going to go for it again. And this time will be thwarted as well. You know. It's Doesn't forward. have those boots yet. And he's, we are just, his movement's really good. Like, he does a little zigzag. It's see, like, you're running from a crocodile. What do you do? You don't run in a straight line. Those things run faster than you. So he does a little zigzag, and you can't zigzag as well in the, the bat rider. He's, he's done his research. How do you feel about the terror blade? This, oh, we, ah, he's going for it in the mid lane. Throws out the bolt. He's got the level two chain. Not quite enough. 
But when Zeus is bullying a Batrider in any way, shape, or form, yep. you know things are going to be tough in that mid lane. And not in the way you'd expect. Secret's pulling a lot of these lanes. Pile Eye onto the lone Druid in the off lane. He keeps on denying his, his neutral pull as well. So, so uh, The one lane we haven't really talked about, uh, Spectre is farming, but how do you feel about the Timbersaw this game. I think you briefly mentioned that you feel like it could be a good matchup, but what are yeah. what are the keys here for Misery? I think he just needs to get that early farm and levels, which Chen spent some time top guaranteeing that Timbersaw at least get, what, a fast level three? And from there, like, he can at least stay in this lane, not get completely bullied out of it. And if he can get like a, a few little items here or there, suddenly that here, like Timbersaw is a good counter to Spectre. And that to me is a big reason why this pick is going to work well for Secret. Oh, another engage between S4 Weehaw. Since when do mid players actually fight this much early on? Oh, Double damage regret by S4. All right, finally, he might get what he needs, but rotating in is the Chen. Can he possibly save Weehaw here and turn this one around? Needs just two more auto attacks, it looks like. Weehaw, alive for now, pops the stick. That's going to keep him in fighting shape, but S4 commits. Third time's the charm. He gets him. He's looking for Puppy as well. And Gustav has pulled it off, grabs two mid, and flaps away. You know, gods, most players after the first blood and the second failed attempt, the walk of shame back to base would take it easy. S4 triples down on the aggression, and it pays off. Master of the rune. Uh, <laughs> he, not just the fact, not, not just the rune he gets there, but the fact he makes sure he gets it with a really perfectly timed flame break. Didn't have to be a DD. I think if it's not a, like a DD or a haste, he probably doesn't get those kills. But ultimately, he's in the position to make his own luck and turns up, gets the double kill. Suddenly, Alliance in a much better spot. Because this Batrider, the blink timing, when you go for this greedy Spectre Lone Druid duo, and you've got a support silencer who can't rotate, Witch Doctor, who's not a roaming hero, S4's Bat is the only hero that can control the tempo of this game, find pickoffs, lead Alliance like around the map. So he needs to have a good game. When he's getting owned mid early on, Alliance are in all sorts of trouble, so a huge turnaround for him. And he's got four stacks here. He's, he's going got for the lasso. Kill. He wants Weeha. Oh, beautiful. Come here, buddy. I got a little flame for you. S4 from a first blood to a killing spree. This is quickly becoming a great redemption story, not just for him, but for the whole Alliance yep. team. Meanwhile, though, Misery top lane does get very yep. aggressive here on the silencer. Going to force out that EGM salve and back away. I definitely would have believed that S4 could be on a five and a half minute killing spree coming into the game as bad. That's that's standard S4 things. That's but. what I would have expected. If anyone's going to be on killing spree, it is the bat on the Zeus, but not after giving up first yes. blood. That's the crazy <laughs> twist. So carries kind of trading farm for the most part. Terrorblade Inspector kind of comparable for the most part. As far as offlaners go, Misery seems to be having a slightly better time. Level five and a half and already 15 last hits. So. Well, as for Secret, they've given up a couple kills here on the Zeus. How do you see their lineup fitting together? Uh, what's the what's like the the game plan, the timings they're looking for? You mentioned we talked a little bit about Timbersaw. How do how do the pieces all come together here for Secret? I think they'll get together in the around the 10 minute mark, start pres pressuring towers with Metamorph. So they want to fight around Metamorph, the Chen Creep army, and really push their advantage. They've got that global presence of Thunder God's Wrath as well. So if they can like lead into a kill on someone like Lone Druid with that assisted damage, we could see them make a lot happen here in the early game. They rev up the snare on Bulldog, but he's going to be absolutely fine under his tower. And isn't really doing so well in terms of CS. Had a decent start of it, but he's only averaging about three CS a minute here, a little bit less, in fact. So it's been a tougher lane for him as the, the game progresses. This is going to resummon the bear now. Zeus, level six online, and I'm wondering if they look to use that Chen to set up a kill. Chen, only level four at seven minutes in. It's been a slower start here for Puppy. Yeah, he's, and he's been spending a lot of time in this jungle outside of that one rotation mid, which is what supposedly set him far back a lot this game. Not not farming in the jungle, going down to the Batrider, and speaking of which, Misery. Oh, he knows the fog, S4. Taking advantage of it, they get the silence off of Misery, and then from behind comes the Bat Misery down as well. And that is almost the blink for S4. And the scary thing with it, oh, nice, nice call, Witch Doctor. The scary thing about the S4 Batrider blink is that you you go in for a blink last week on someone, you've got a Spectre Haunt to back you up. Spectre is, despite being a greedy last pick and a really amazing late game carry, it's a hero that can contribute to the early to mid game when you've got a good partner. And the, the Batrider is an amazing one. Not to mention you've got the Silence of Global, so it's a very safe way for Alliance to go for They games. have great synergy as well because the Spectre really wants to be able to get those Desolate auto attacks off. And when you drag the hero away from their team, it's very easy to get the bonus damage. So 
I think there's a lot of pickoff potential. Would love to see the urn build. I, I, to me, that's been the most effective Specter build generally, and he already has it with the phase boot. So I think, like you said, they'll be looking for those lassos and the pickoffs, and then Specter will go back to farming on the back of it. The alliance tower defense needs to begin. It's secret hitting that kind of Chen creep plus metamorph timing. As mentioned earlier, they, they want to take T1 towers, and it looks like for Alliance, they didn't have the Batrider blink just yet. He picks it up now after farming out the mid wave, and if they'd had that blink dagger, maybe they would have been able to defend this bottom lane, but. As for Secret, taking advantage of Terror Blade's incredible early game push power. Yeah. They will muscle down the tier one. They did even recruit the Chen's assistance for that. I think here comes the Batrider blink dagger smoke gank with a Spectre Horn. This is going to be. If you're loaded, not only do you want to contribute to a kill, you want to get urn charges. Getting those first few urn charges makes a big difference. It helps sustain yourself in lane later on, as well as get that extra bit of burst in damage when going for kills. I can hear Bulldog now, gank my lane, you fools! And here we go, the lasso again, the Spectre Hunt forward. There's the silence, no escape, EE down. No a nine minute well blink, you. no chance. Yeah, great kill. And they, a clean kill. And they commit four heroes as well as multiple ultimates, but that's the nature of the Alliance draft. You make sure you get that kill. It's a carry. The Silence has taken over the top lane to farm. This is like, all in all, the pieces of the puzzle fitting in very nicely for Alliance. The one thing EGM has to be careful of is like, he's very exposed in this top lane, so that's a, that's a hero that Secret may look to punish. Even a Timber Soul, if he lands his spells, could solo kill a Silence again. Five to two the score, Secret. Still waiting to really see the the ganks from the Chen. It was just a straight push bottom lane. I, did Puppy actually use that smoke when he went bottom? Or is he still hanging on to it? No, he still has the smoke. For now. Misery though, Ooh, really. Getting punished bad. by the silencer quite a bit. And Lasso might be up soon. Flame break is available. And it's gonna be used here in conjunction with the Napalm S4 everywhere this man goes. Criminals melt. He's hit six of their kills, 10 minutes in. Just just S4 things. I thought Alliance were all washed up gods. What is this? I don't know. Apparently, they don't. it's a new year, and for them, it's, no, it's not 2016. It's 2013 all over again. Well, Misery called it their patch. Yeah. And they are proving that their signature heroes of old are still as strong as ever. So Envy goes back to the jungle now. Looks like the Yasha first is going to be the pickup for him. No uh, Dragon Lance shenanigans this time around, just pure jungle efficiency. And they're going to smoke with the Terror Blade. Are they sneaking Not rush? normally in early. This is, the, this is the old Cloud9 nine, Cloud nine Against no, a Spectre mid. and a Bat? That feels yeah. very risky. Yeah, they're, they're going for different objectives. Oh, they're going to lead the way with the Terror Blade, and they just want to jump the tower. It looks like, well, the tower's not going anywhere. They found it, and they are going to gank it. No defending this one for Alliance. S4 Bat not in position. Even if he was nearby, it'd be kind of tricky to do so. The Global Silence was still on cooldown, and the Secret, when they have Metamorph up, they are very strong and scary. Yeah, and Alliance, as much as they have great pickoff potential, they don't have that much AoE or wave clear. Back up now, though. The Lasso's ready. This is a clean Lasso if they want it. And S4, he's threatening to go blink's in. Canceled, that, blink that, well, is getting canceled. Yeah. Pylai Dai tries to snare him, but he blinks out to dodge it. That means he can't blink into initiate. They're going to blast him with the Zeus. They keep S4 at bay, and in doing so, they secure the tower. Very well played push there by Secret, denying any sort of initiation. And it could have been scary if he got the jump. Still kind of acceptable for Alliance. Like, those are the kind of towers they're going to have to give up. Secret are the ones who have to be the aggressors when they have the Chen Oracle Terra Blade trio. And for Alliance, it's just a bit of breathing room that Bulldog has not had this game. He's starting to catch up to the cores, up to 4K net worth. It's that typical struggle in the laning stage, catch up later on kind of game for him. Oh, Pi, they're trying to hang on to the lasso here and finish him off without it. They will commit the haunt. Firefly going in over the top. Puppy's there with the heal. Spectre engages into this one. The Zeus starts to go to work. A lot of nuke damage from him. Pi Knight kept alive by the ultimate. They drag back Puppy. They're going for the twofer. Do they get it? Pi Knight all about 10, almost dead. Loda rushes in. He's going to get the last hit. It's a double for Loda. Misery whiffing the chains. And now Envy looks to chase. Can Loda get up the cliff? He's got the dagger heading over the tree line. They can't quite run him down. Using the path. Gets away. We have Ah, didn't have the rage there on the bolt, but the Wild King gives the vision. They're going to chain forward. Do they have that chakram distance? Doesn't look like it. Another earned charge, and he makes it out. Loda getting aggressive early. It's a drums pickup as well. Alliance, after a lot of effective early ganks, are going to keep on going with the pressure. I, I really like it from Loda. The decision to get drums when you know your team can't be creating, like, 4v5-ing totally without you because you've got the Lone Druid. If anything, it's 4v5 without Lone Druid right now. And Lotus says, okay, I'll probably go for the Radiance, 
but I want to get the drums along the way just to make our team fight that much better right now, considering Lone Druid is not in fighting shape. And do you do you reckon he gets the radiance, or do you maybe let Bulldog do it and go for something like the you know the Manta Diffusal type build? I think Manta Diffusal is very viable this game. It's the Manta is always just like a really nice item to amplify a lot of your damage output. Uh, you can farm just fine without the radiance, so I think it's still a legit possibility that they just stick with the the typical radiance bear and Spectre just go for more of that fighting oriented build. Yeah, what's uh, looks like there is action top though. They found Loda. They're gonna chain onto him, and this time they get the Spectre. A much needed kill for Secret. But while that was happening, bit unfortunate. Ake was trying to drop a ward near the lane to prevent exactly that maneuver. Doesn't quite get there in time though. But maybe Puppy's the trade. They've got him. They found the Holy Knight. His Holiness. Uh, look at look at the spam pins like dead. right on the ward. Like, like uh, I think this is uh, something they somehow blink and lassoed me out of nothing. I mean, S4 is a good bat rider, but there's no way yeah. he's that good is the call by Puppy and team. And that ward just planned by Alliance in the top lane, kind of not as valuable anymore because they've lost the T1 tower. It's a great ward to have to scout that rotation up top, put yourself in a position to take a fight up there and defend it, but it just, the push came too soon from Secret. And that's something which Secret have to keep maintain. Push, push, push. Don't stop that. Don't, don't stop or slow down. More, even more so when Alliance have their ultimates, when, uh, when they have their ultimates on cooldown. Global Silence and Haunt aren't available. You've got to go and take advantage of those long cooldowns. Yeah, we haven't actually seen that global in the lasso yet combo. They've just been doing regular lassos. And yeah. It's been working they out. They had the one at bottom lane when they first killed Envy, which was like the, the first global oh, of the yeah, game. But, yeah, that's true. But since then, it's just been finding lasso pickoffs whenever possible. Secret of five manning too much to do that because... The, you've got to silence instantly, otherwise the false promise kicks in. That's a big reason why the silence pickup is amazing. It actually makes the bat rider viable. We've it, seen it negates so many, the oracle so hard. We've seen so many oracles just, just just negate bat rider's impact in the mid to late game through false promise. But silence suddenly says, "Ah, eh, it's okay. We, we we can still do this." Bulldog trying for the trade in the bottom lane. The tower is very low, and they want Envy to get the last hit here, if possible. One more auto tech gets the job done. He's walking forward, and oh, he's being sent back. Yeah. So he'll make it out. There's the haunt. Looks like they want to engage onto this on the top lane at the same time. Weehaw's going bottom onto the lone druid. Pylai die, looking to keep himself alive with the ultimate. But does he make it out of here? Loda's on the hunt. Phases in, gets a couple of auto attacks off, even through the heals. Though it's not enough damage yet. Zeus ult committed. They're also trying to chase down the Chen, perhaps. There's the lasso. S4 trying to prevent the send back. Looks like they might get two again. Alliance, no, there's the hand of God. Keep alive, Pylai die. Still running. So tanky. They just can't kill him off. S4 and sent back. <laughs> They're keeping them all salvaged. Secret, giving up nothing. It's S4's turn to run. There's the slow from the Terra Blade, the chase forward, trying to shut down this Bat Rider, but he's got the four step now. And S4 will make it out safely in the end. This Pilot Eye guy is pretty godly. Like, he is going to be one of those players who has the w probably worst, like, ratio of, like, KDA to, like, how good you are at Dota. Like, his, K his, his normal, like, kill score and deaths is just, like, one of the worst con considering just his amazing ability. He's 0-1 and 0. He's done so much more than that this game. He's been a key reason into shutting Bulldog down in lane, getting tons of clutch saves off, applying a lot of pressure, and, well, secret off to another smoke. This time, perhaps thinking Roche. This is the Roche sneak. Yep. They bypass they, the ward. They know the haunt and the last are on cooldown. Oh, yeah. Very, very safe movement. For now, we've seen this exact Roshan backfire right. so, so many times. So here's what's going to happen. Alliance is going to five-man wipe them at the pit, and then they will win. Yeah, I mean, they've got the greedy that's draft. The pattern. That's the that, if, if we go by history, that's right. exactly what's going to happen. They have Lasso. They've got Global now, they too. They do not have Haunt. This oh, no. movie has happened oh, no. too many times before. The bear comes in, gets off the Savage Roar, delay the Roshan. What a play by Bulldog. He may lose the bear, but this is setting up the whole team to get in position. S4's ready. Do they engage? They're waiting on Haunt. S4, God of the Pit. The Batman jumps in. There's the Global. Where's the lasso? They're going to pull Misery out of the picture. Up onto the cliff. He's down for the count. Ake gets blasted by the Zeus, but it's already too late. Alliance. Still a hard fight. Looking for the Roche fight, but Alliance they've committed. Alliance can't really continue. They want to wait Metamorph out here. If Metamorph wears off, then Secret are incredibly weak. There's a Veil up. They're still looking to go in. S4, is he going to commit on this? The Roche is low. Can the team that started the Roche oh, actually Chris. finish it for once? S4 oh. wants to jump in. The Bear, again, Envy's trying to in. turn the Roche fight. Envy's committed to this. Loda runs into the pit, but the Radiant get the Aegis as well as the kill, and then Loda dies immediately. Weeha might be the trade the of cast. beautiful cast. Look at they it go. go! They get four, and now they
high chase on Envy. Oh. He got the Aegis. He got the Roche kill. But was it enough? They push in the bear. They're not quite in range. The Timber saw rejoining the fight, trying to at least salvage the one prize they got from this. That cask, though. I'm just like Roshan every single time. These teams have got to just be like kicking themselves. Like, man, I thought finally we found an opportunity to go for Roshan. And again, just not like this. Third, third time, definitely congested. not the charm here. <laughs> third time, third disaster at I'm the pit. I'm watching this like we've seen two Roshan disasters. Surely it's on a third game in a row, like LD. That, that doesn't happen, I right? I felt it coming. Ugh. I felt it. It's so hard to Rosh against this draft, though. Yep. When there's Global and Lasso, they have no counterplay at this stage. They yep. don't have any way to purge off the, the no Yule Scepter on anybody, uh, no Mansa style, no Diffusal Blade. No BKBs. They had to just gun they it to the th pit. Oh, they do have the one man yeah. on the Terrorblade. But the Terrorblade can't stop the Lasso initiation, nope. so it doesn't really matter. Well, suddenly not looking as good as it once was for, for Secret. And it was already kind of like a fairly even game, which Secret, despite taking a ton of towers, didn't have much of a gold advantage in. So things going to continue for the worst. I mean, you just look at Alliance, wherever they have ultimates up, I don't see any way Secret take a team fight. You get Chen's the one going with for the Greaves, so Chen will have, I guess you can guarantee a Greaves plus Hand of God when the Lasso is coming out, but it's ideally the Oracle who needs some way to purge off the Silence so you can get that instant False Promise off, but Pi, he's not going to farm any kind of item to get rid of it anytime soon. Uh, that amazing start that he's had and all the plays he's made are really negated by the global. So we'll see how Secret look to deal with it. For now, they do hold the Aegis on Envy, who aggressively postures himself mid, clearing out the wave. And he's still very fun. Envy is the, the net worth leader currently. Well, this is a bold move. Just charging into their jungle. Doesn't actually have that much backup. And the rest yeah. of the team is scouted by a ward here. I think the, the one top really important thing about Envy's Manta is that he can help guarantee a Sunder off. Because if they're trying to use the global silence to prevent his Sunder, he can escape and then just make sure he make sure he casts it. Yeah, certainly with the Aegis, I don't I don't think we'll be seeing him as the lasso target unless they can pull him way out of position. This floor. Uh, is it a, a career, career sniper? sniper. Are we gonna add that to his total? What? One, two, come back here, Donkey. And it's got oh 3750. It's carrying so much. Did he even uh, I, he took There's the no wheels off now. the push. Did they have a ward? I think they had the ward there and it just expired on that cliff, perhaps, because that was like either some sixth sense or so they're pinging out as if it's warded there. Like it must so, be warded. So How there was know? a Yule Scepter there, and that would have allowed oh, man. them to maybe turn fights with Misery, perhaps. I think yeah. it was Misery's Yule Scepter, but S4, what an explosive game it's been. And the Yule's always like, if you can instantly use on the bat when he blinks in, it just makes that a little bit harder for him to get those good lasso full staffs off. Seven, one, and five. They've had 13 kills. He's been in 12. Incredible stuff. Just, like, he's got that one zero two Bulldog game going on, but that's like the, the dream for him. He just gets all the space in the world. He doesn't die. And considering the lane he had and how much he got pressured, it, not having a single death is a, a great performance coming out from the lone Druid, who is, as per usual with Alliance, top of the net worth chart. No surprises there. It does make sense, though. I, the Spectre is just a better ganking partner uh, yep. for the, the bat. As weird as that sounds, just given that Spectre is generally considered very weak early game, I think it's a great way to distribute the form. Spectre with a Yasha now, so it will be that kind of more fighting-oriented build with like a Yasha, Manta, Diffusal, whatever they feel they kind of need. Oh, and now a big pickup here on the Bat Rider. Gets the Aether Lens mm, and yeah. also carries the gem, yep. so he's got the easy lasso. This is where... Not well, that he's needed it up to this point. We talk about map control. Both teams unlikely to get a whole lot of vision up. Gem on the Batrider. You've got Zeus to deward for Team Secret. So vision going to become fairly limited as a resource for the two teams. Well, Spectre is farming. Lone Druid is farming. Bat has been controlling the game. If you're Secret, you've had an Aegis on Terrorblade. They have taken ta Outer Towers with it. Where do they go from here? How do they cement the Terrorblades farm and, and look to push it into a, an advantage. I don't really think they can they can fight. I think Alliance is just too strong with the global silence plus lasso. So despite maybe not having the most amazing late game, I think they need to trend, like become more of a farming team right now. Like the Chen, just 5k net worth. You want to try and get that Aghanim Scepter up eventually. Misery's got the Yule Scepter. And also importantly, right now the Curry is dead. So like they've got 4k net worth just not available to them. So they're looking at their next couple of items and they do not want to team fight. They want to try and find pickoffs, get the jump, and if they like find a gank on someone like a lone druid or whatever, 
Alliance isn't going to want to use their Global Silence defensively. Or if you're forcing them to do so, that's a great position to be in. Alliance want to use it when they're getting the lasso, when they're being the aggressors. So if you can force Alliance into a position where they have to react to Secret in defensive nature, that's that's going to where Secret want to be. So try to force them to waste the, the Global, yeah. ideally. Go for some smoke ganks, try and find some pickoffs, uh, and then... I mean, just fall back and farm if you're unsuccessful. So uh, if you're successful, then suddenly all the outer towers are gone. You can threaten high ground, force buybacks. But they do not want to try and take 5v5 engagements where Alliance has a vision advantage over them and is getting the catch. If Alliance gets the catch at the side of the fight, fight should just be instantly lost. Well, speaking of vision advantage, this is where the gem could come into play. Zeusult does scout out the fact that there's a smoke gank happening. And now the courier's back. So the Yule Scepter is picked up by Timbersaw at long last. He gets something new. Yep. So he now has a solution for the global. I imagine we're going to see quite a few of these secret heroes building them up as the game progresses. Yeah, Pi, just the casual cloak, may think Aetherlands, it's okay. Like, it's at this point, he's just kind of under farm, can't really get much in the way of items. And yeah, EGM rushing a veil. We, I, we saw it in that, Ro that Roshan pit fight, and it was one of those crazy things, like, we haven't really talked about. That makes a huge difference as far as, like, the overall damage output of oh, something yeah. like the, the Batrider. The, and, and, the, and the Radiance burn as well. Yeah. We saw this from Alliance in the group stage. It's really nasty, and it's a very kind of different, more aggressive way to play the silencer rather than like let's just sit in one of the side lanes and farm an eggs or throw an or ultimate when, while my team four v five. Like he's he wants to be in these fights and offer a lot more. Veil but also gives a ton of intel, so it really amplifies up that glaive's damage. Oh, not again! Uh, this time, <laughs> the courier is wise to the bat's tricks, and that's the complete Scotty. And as that, they pick that up, would have been smoke, really yeah. devastating. Oh, they're ready for... Uh, they want to engage on Alliance here. That's a very fat Terra Blade. What a position to be in for S4. Looks like the the bat is scouted out. Weeha able to prevent him from initiating. Now they move on to Loda. Scotty starts to go to work. The Yule Scepter does come out. And they look to engage, but the global lasso combo is used on Weeha. Trying to focus the Zeus down at the start of the fight. They will finish him off the Terra. The Timbers are also dropping low during this time. And now Fredo gets to work in the middle of it. But Envy has heavy damage here. He's able to bring them down. The big old six spending. Can Alliance still fight? Can Envy 1v4 here as far as the damage goes? They've already lost two. Alliance running back in. The Bears there gets the root on Puppy. Pylai die, trapped in the trees. He might go down too. Bear smacking away at him. He's alive for now, courtesy of the ultimate. But then he just melts after it ends. Four are dead. They tried to hit the timey with the Scotty, the Manta on the Terror Blade, but that global into Lasso, there is just no counterplay for Secret. Yep. Chen even had the Greaves that fight, so he Greaves, he Greaves up the Zeus, he then Hands of Gods. They use both of their big AoE heals to try and save a Zeus, and they don't save the Zeus. So effectively, two of Chen's biggest tools in a team fight, quote unquote, wasted, and then the Zeus dead at the side of the fight. That was just unwinnable team fight. And I think Alliance actually are always going to have the damage they need to kill off that Zeus if he gets lassoed in a global. It's just impossible for Secret to take a team fight. They weren't necessarily looking to take a team fight there. They were smoked up, I think, anticipating to try and get a catch and be the ones initiating themselves. But S4's positioning on that cliff just allowed them to see Secret coming and to take advantage of having like that extra bit of vision advantage over them. S4 continues to pile in the gold. 2,400 on him now. Curious okay. what the if it's is it a BKB next year? Do you think uh, could get travels? He's kind of he has no item slots right now, so I think travels makes sense. Although I guess you could drop the bottle off, but like travels is always just good in a game like this. You've got global presence from the silencer, the specter. So, well, if he we'll wants see. them, he can pick them up anytime. Good position now. Roshan about to come up one minute, and yeah, I think he's just yeah, he's just bought the travels. All right. For staff as well. We'll From there, going. there's like plenty of items. He can go for a Shivers if he wants to be able to help deal with the Terra Blade a bit better. BKB's really nice against Timbersaw and Zeus, so it's probably mo most likely BKB next. Yeah, more for more more four staffs here, either to initiate with the bat. Speaking of which, he's found Pilot Eye again, grabs him with the Aether Lens extended range on that lasso cast and Another kill. Now Spectre haunting in, looking to engage. Jumping out to Weeha. A lot of damage coming out from him. Oh, he's too slow. Weeha oh, needs help. No. It's not going to come in time. S4 is godlike. And Secret are getting routed here in the back lines. The bear is angry. The bear needs towers. And it looks like he's going to get them. Global still online, guys. I, I think the biggest sign that Secret's in a terrible spot right now is when the ultis were on cooldown, they didn't try and go aggressive. Like, they lose that fight top. Typically against a lineup like this, you want to try and fight immediately after that because there's no haunt, there's no global silence. That's like the ideal time for Secret to be strong enough to take a fight. But I think importantly, Secret, 
have a long cooldown ultimate of their own in the form of Metamorph. Like, as, as bad as it is for Alliance to not have Global and Haunt when you're behind, like, Secret Out, not having Metamorph is not having the majority of your damage output. It's, so. the, it's the vast majority. Timbersaw feels very ineffective in these yes. fights. And that he's their most farmed hero. So with a 16k net worth hero, without his most important spell, suddenly it's actually really problematic for Secret that they can't capitalize on Alliance having these long cooldowns down. Well, we saw that in the in the last fight top, that it, it basically was a 1v4, 1v5, almost immediately for Envy. And even with the Metamorph, struggled to get the damage out, let alone if you don't have it. But back on topic here for the current action, Secret move down mid. Alliance in decent position up on the high ground. They have a global. They have a lasso. Secret feeling a bit desperate, perhaps, to f get an opening. But they don't have a great initiation. They are not the team with a bat rider like hero puppy is gonna lead the way he runs in and just nukes an illusion off the bat and then goes in for some auto attacks on bulldog man secret really pressing for these kills but the cask is gonna shut the door on that <laughs> back and forth and well it was a good effort hoping to secure a position for roshan but not going to amount to anything Speaking of Roshan, it's now up. I, I, there's like no way to go for that. Terribly. I mean, as bad a position as you might be, and you don't go for Roshan right now for Secret. So I guess with this, Envy just looking to be able to purge off his teammates, grabbing the Diffusal Blade yeah, on Terrorblade. Yeah, I think so. You want to you be able to yeah, get rid of the silence on someone like the Oracle instantly. I mean, they're not going to be able to farm anything I that will remove it. So it's an interesting grab by Envy. Yeah. Known for his out-of-the-box thinking. I think a very kind of creative way to try and play these team fights. Oh, they want to move. They've got a lot of mobility here. Mass array of four steps, but Secret are just far enough out of range that they can't quite grab them. Still, already a Diffusal Blade charge getting popped. It looks like Misery tries to slow down but and push out that bottom lane, but Alliance are having none of it. Into the pit they go. They are looking for the Aegis. They have Global, they have Lasso. They have the vision advantage around the pit overall, and, and it's going to be very tough for Secret yep. to contest. And Secret have to give this one up. They know Roche is going on. They have the water, the Secret shop, the mid lane, and when they don't see Alliance walking past those wards to retreat, it's like, well, they're at Roche, but can we really fight them? Unlikely. So they're giving Alliance a Roche, and they're going to put all their all their beans just in the high ground defense. Like that's that's exactly like what they're going to try and do with Timbersaw Zeus. They can stall the game out. They can try and deal with the Batrider Lasso through the False Promise, but this game is going to quickly get very, very difficult when it's just Envy's Terra Blade. You haven't even got to farm Zeus going into the late game. If Zeus had like 12 to 14k net worth right now, I'd be like, okay, yeah, Secret, they've got a shot. Maybe they can stall things out. Zeus does a lot of damage. He's an amazing late game hero, one, one of the best when farmed, but he's got less farm than the EGM Silencer. And this is not a Midas Silencer. This is a aggressive fighting Silencer with full stuff. Veil working on a Hex right now. This he is the old EGM. Oh, it's yeah. been a while since we've seen this level of farm on him, but yep. it used to be his signature before there was even an AUI 2000 as the, the I massively like farmed four position. I used to do it more by like just farming and being greedy yeah. and jungling, but this is being by This is like the, gank, the ganking fighting yep. super farmed four. And what a like what a pick up the Veil's been. It's one of those things which I, I think we're going to just be seeing more and more of in certain drafts because of how powerful it is um, with, combined with certain drafts against squishy heroes like a Zeus Terra Blade. Oh this man. Zeus has not stood a chance in any of these fights. It's a Fusal Blade now on the Spectre. Their damage output is getting just absolutely ridiculous. Four of the top five on net worth rest with the Alliance. And even the Witch Doctor doubling up the Oracle. So Alliance across the board, a massive gold advantage, a similar experience advantage, I am sure. And it's not like they lack for late game. They've got incredible initiation, really good team fight. Plenty of carry potential from the Spectre plus Lone Druid combo. So, th again, all the options are there. They can try and force the issue. They can just farm for late. Secret are completely backed up. And all in on the Envy Terrorblade at this point. Yeah, and this stage, all it takes is, like, one big S4 pick. You can see how aggressive he's trying to be with that fire. Oh, he's found it. He's going to grab Weeha, drags him out of the base. No global just yet. They are going to manage to purge that last off towards the tail, and then the Diffusal Blade comes in from Envy. But there's Loda with his own Diffusal going to work on Envy, dropping quickly. They bring him down. He turns so slowly looking for the ult, but he can't get it off. They just had no save. Oh, he's, he's going to have to buy nope. back, it looks like. Oh, he does have it. 50 seconds. Yeah, there's no choice. Envy will be forced to use it. But he comes back without a Metamorph here. He's only got the Illusions to go to work. The Spectre is down once. Can they kill him a second time? 
Actually, he does have the metaphor of laying in the load, trying to finish him off here quickly. Can he do it? They take out Can the they get the bear? bear but but enemies in far. Loda, be you careful. cannot die. Puppy's going to go down to the glaives of EGM. Then the NBO Loda, comes through. he's entangled. Oh, the root. Where's the help? Three are dead. It's about to be four, and NV2 will fall. Silencer, Ultra Kill, EGM, the hidden carry of Team Alliance. GG. Woo. Just like that, Team Secret get knocked out. The crowd are rushing the stage here. It is insane. Team Alliance have knocked Team Secret out. Apparently, from Alliance's Starlander. home turf extends to the CIS. Oh, yeah. What a win for this team. Many questioned their invite to the Shanghai Major, but I think with this one, Gods, they've proven they deserve oh, it. Dude. Alliance. They're here. They're here to stay. That's got to feel good for those guys. What a showing from this team. Good sportsmanship. They'll shake hands with Secret now. S4 just had the Batrider game of his life. EGM brilliant on the silencer. Everything went Alliance's way here. Absolutely. And everyone watching this game is going to really look at Alliance and be like, this is a serious threat for the title. You've got to be scared going into Alliance. Team Liquid have got to be like theory crafting over and over. Like, what do we give them? Is it the Lone Druid? Is it the S4 Batrider? Is it the Nature's Prophet? They just have all their heroes in the metagame right now. And drafting against this team, near impossible. Playing against this team, even more difficult when they're playing as well as they are. The Swedes are on top for now. They've got a date with Liquid tomorrow. Tough opponent for them, but with the way they played here, the resilience they showed, feels like they have what it takes. Absolutely. I, I, I could see Alliance going all the way through the Grand Finals. They're playing that good, but they're versing a Team Liquid who's that's, also had an incredible tournament. So That's plenty. not the Swedish flag. <laughs> Look, we're here in Belarus. We're here in Minsk. Alliance, perhaps Belarus claiming Alliance as their own team right now. <laughs> like, these guys, they're honorary Belarusians today. What in Belarus do as the locals? Impressive stuff from Alliance. But that looks like we're going to be getting ready for our post-game interview. Alliance facing Liquid tomorrow. Big win for them and just an unexpected series overall. So many games where one team had a lead. And then the Roshan fights really decided the game. This was the one where Secret went for the big gambit from behind and got totally punished for it. Absolutely. And this was, I mean, it's been a story of bad Roche, uh, re bad Roche fights in the best of three and just the team with the slightly greedier draft getting away with it. Alliance made up for it by not going all out greed. They fought with the Spectre. They took a few more chances. And hey, it worked out perfectly. They are just so good at creating the space for Bulldog to get him online in the late game. and. Secret thought they had the answer to the Lone Druid, but I, I don't even think, I think giving Lone Druid to, to Alliance was an okay plan for them. It was just the, everything else happening around it. It did, not feel, Alliance won. it did not feel like the Lone Druid won the game. Bulldog yeah. played well, but the team made space for him. It looks like we're going to get an interview momentarily with the man of the hour, S4, walking out on stage with Sir Action Slacks. He is a man of few words. I'm not sure if we'll get any crazy quips, but here we go. Post-game interview coming up. Congratulations for Team Alliance. I think yeah, that all of you enjoy this game, and right now I want you, all the people that came here on the stadium, show our respect to Team Secret. And right now, Jake, I think that the S4 mm, will smile maybe after this beautiful and nice game. Okay, our interview. Let's go. All right, all right. Well, hello, S4. Allow me to be the first one to say it officially. It looks like Alliance is back, baby. Woo! That's good stuff, right? All right, there we go. Fantastic. All right, now, you lost your blanket, but your plays are still sick, baby. What did you think about that last game, man? Oh, it was a pretty solid game. With yeah, our timing was perfect. Pretty good stuff. Now, I got some questions for you. First one, you guys have, uh, people are saying that this is kind of your meta. Your heroes are getting a little buffed. It seems like you've kind of mastered it. Obviously, you've been doing pretty good in the last two major tournaments you've been in. Uh, do you feel like you've mastered the meta? You're good to go? Or is there still more to learn before you hit up the major? Well, uh, speaking for myself, I, I'm getting to play these heroes. I love playing. Like, I can create stuff. I can create stuff happening, right. like with Batrider and Puck and stuff like that and yeah. like that's the way that's the way I want to play right now so yeah, yeah. it fits me so you guys feel like you're pretty good to go are you gonna have a good time coming up in the rest of the tournament 
No, I mean, we're going to have to see on the next match. We're playing Liquid, and they're really good right now. That's right. Now, you guys are going up against Liquid in the semifinals tomorrow. It's going to be one heck of a match. If you win that, you're up against either LGD or EG. Who are you most nervous about facing off against, and uh, why? Uh, between who? LGD and EG? Or Liquid. Eh? Liquid, for sure, right now. Yeah, because we, we played against LGD and EG in the group stage, and yeah. it was pretty good games against them. But Liquid's still that mystery thing, so uh, they still got a little bit to be worried about. Okay, understandable. Now, before we did this, I took an online poll with uh, some of the viewers, and they asked me to ask you a specific question. A couple thousand people voted. They want to know, do you remember the Million Dollar Dream, Carl? Yeah, I, rem I remember. Are you sure you were the puck and you did all? Yeah. Okay, good. I, I want to ask you a question. Do you remember the Million Dollar Rats? Oh, yeah, everybody remembers, baby. Well, you'll never have to have that question again, so that's a good one. All right, man. So here you go. You're ready to go. Any final words out there to all your Alliance fans? You've got such a crowd here supporting you guys. What do you have to say to them before we go away? Uh, thanks for all the support, and, yeah, nice sharing. All right, sounds good. Well, thank you so much for watching. Alliance is moving on, and we'll be back later. Thank you so much, and we can take it over at the panel for more Counter-Strike Go. Don't go anywhere. We're still rolling. Thanks a lot.